So let's start and model our chain. And making a chain in Blender is actually a lot easier than it looks. As a chain is made up of multiple links that pretty much all look the same. So we can simplify the entire process by using modifiers. So let's go ahead and we will create the shape of our individual links. Alright, so let's go Shift A, add in a curve, circle. Make sure you don't add in a nibs, um, nib circle, you want a regular circle. Now there's a significant difference between nibs and Bezier's. But we want to work with Bezier for our circle in this case, whereas we will use nibs later on. So you, you will see the difference. So add in our curve and selecting everything, we want to grab these two and we want to scale them down along the y axis. Alright, about there should be fine. And we want to scale them up along x. And you can see they don't actually scale up, so first we need first we need to do is click a line for our handle type in which case we can now scale them up fantastic we now have a nice uh, curved rectangle this one here we are going to be calling this uh, let's call this one here chain link Bring that one there up. Alright. So now we want now that we've got this, we want to create the width of it. So we'll duplicate this with the shift D on the Y axis. And don't know why that turned off. Alright. So in edit mode for this one, we're going to tab into edit mode and rotate this 90 degrees. Make sure we select the whole curve. Now we want to make sure we rotate around the Z axis by the way, or if you're on top view you'll be rotating around the Z axis. Okay, so we'll call this one here, chain width. Fantastic. So with our, our chain link, we need to go into our curve settings and we need to choose our bevel object to be the chain width that we created. Now I've got a few extra ones there for a reason, you'll see that a little later on, don't worry about that. Alright, now you can see it's obviously way too thick. So we need to scale this one down. Okay, just so, just so it's a nice shape. Now the reason we're using rectangles by the way instead of a standard oval chain link is because we're doing fine jewellery we want to give it that nice classy look, which generally involves a different style. So we're going to be using that curve as I was modeling off an actual piece of jewelry. Um, and yeah, that is the style it was, so this is the style we're doing. Um, you, can, you can obviously change that to your preference. And you can see this is a little too high poly, so we want to change the resolution of both of these down to about 5. Just so it's a little, a little easier to, to work with. And when you're creating your chain, by the way, if you, if you find that it's a little too much, you might want to say, you know, I want this to be high resolution while rendering, so we might use eight for render, and one, or maybe two for our preview. But of course, once again, that depends on the your preference and the machine you're using. So let's add in the path. This is going to be the path that our chain links follow. So we'll go Shift A, add in a curve, path. Now this one here is a NURBS path. Now the difference between NURBS and Bezier is quite simple. Um, with NURBS, the curve basically averages itself out between all your points. With Bezier, you have control points along the curve to give it a final control. Now when creating jewelry like this, uh, if the best curve to use is actually a Bezier curve as you can change your handles and you can much easier get those little folds and stuff over the other pieces of drawing. But just for the sake of this tutorial and for the sake of simplicity it is actually a lot easier to use NURBS paths as they are much easier to work with. 
So we want to make sure that our origin is at the end. So select in edit mode, selecting the whole curve, we'll go GX2, which will move the whole curve two squares across so that it's at our origin as the curve is four squares in um, in length. Okay, so this one here, we are going to call this one let's go chain underscore path. Now to control the distance and twist between the chain links, we're going to add in an empty, which we can uh, change to our liking. So we're going to add an empty, I'm going to call this one here, chain spacing. And let's move it across just a fraction. Okay, so. Obviously this is just a little too big, so I'm just going to scale this down a fraction. Scale it right down. This is about the size of an actual piece of chain in, rel in relation to our scene. Fantastic. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our modifier stack. We're going to add in an array modifier. So in here we want to make it fit the length of our curve. So we're going to change that from fit count, a uh, fixed count to fit curve, and change that curve to be chain path. Now the reason that we're using fit curve is basically it will just extend to a, the length of the path. So we don't need to worry about changing the number that's in our curve, we can just you know change it dynamically. So uncheck relative object relative offset and we'll check object offset where we can select our chain spacing. As you can see we've now got a massive length of um, you know massive sizes. If you get that, all that means is you need to go control A and apply the scale. Simple as that, we now have them extending along our path. Okay, so with this chain spacing, we'll just move that across and we'll rotate it around the X axis so that we get that nice sort of look. As you can see, it's actually intersecting the floor plane. So we're going to select both of those and our path and in front view. We're going to go G, Z and we're going to move them up just so that they're resting on the floor plane. Fantastic. Okay, now before we can um, make this move to our, to our curve, we need to also add in a curve modifier. Now this curve modifier, we're going to make sure this one here is set to our chain path. Alright, fantastic. If we go into edit mode now, notice we can actually move these around. And we can make our chain do whatever we want. As you can see with the nerves, it just averages itself out and we get that nice smooth flowing look that you get from jewelry. If you wanted a much sharper look, then by all means you might want to change this to a BZA curve. Okay, so before we move on, we now want to make sure that we get this around and make our shape uh, for example if it was a if you want to spill love like I'm doing this tutorial you can go ahead and do that if you want to make your company logo or something that you want to animate later then you can go ahead and do that also one tip that you might want to bear in mind is if you extrude these around while you're extruding them you come across something like that we're bound to have these little bits where they just pass straight through each other because you want them to loop over each other and yeah they, they kind of need to pass over. So we'll just select these two points along curve, get W, subdivide, and we'll turn that number of cuts up to something like three. You can see we've got oh, it's giving me two cuts. Alright, that'll loop. and just move these around and perhaps add in another one and you can see you can just quite easily 
give yourself like a little notch as it goes over top of that uh, the link. And some you really want to be careful with here. Oops, sorry about that. Um, some you really want to be careful with is intersections. Make sure that your chain does not intersect itself or the floor it's sitting on. It's, it's not quite so bad with the floor, but when it intersects itself, as we're going to be using quite a shiny reflective material, um, it is quite obvious when a piece of chain is intersecting itself. And it is noticeable in the final render. So just bear in mind with that. And another thing you might want to bear in mind is your floating links. As you can see, they do curve as they're coming over here because we're using a curve modifier. But what we've got, um, not so much here, but you will get some sometimes as you get these little ones, like as you can see, here we go. You've got these floating links coming across. You want to be a little bit careful about those. Um, you do want to make sure that they that they do come back down and they do rest close enough to the ground that it looks realistic. Because chain doesn't float as such. I mean, I suppose you could get plastic chain, but in this case, it's not going to float in the air. So just bear that in mind when you're creating it. And with the magic of tutorials. There we go. I have made a nice little message which I have spelt out love which is a quite a nice little thing for a nice if you want to put this on a Valentine's Day card or something like that. And it's using the wrong camera. That's why I had so many curves before by the way. There we go. Alright, so that is basically our chain setup. As an extra little tip for you guys that want to go that a little bit further, you can actually join together our our curve using a little link. So this is a little link that you, links that you often see with jewelry, where they have just a little notch with a slider thingy, and yeah, just build them in between your curves very easy to do, as you can see I've got a curve there, this one here isn't just the same curve duplicated and that one there is the same as well and basically yeah it's just a bunch of circles and um, this one here I've actually converted to a mesh um, or I began with a torus for this one but yeah you, you get the idea, for this just for an intermediate kind of step you can make these little links just those little bits that are really small in the final render, as you can see, it's very tiny. But it just adds that little bit extra level of detail. It just makes it quite nice. Okay, so, with that said and done, let's move on.